When you're in the market for a new cell phone, but aren't ready for that two-year commitment, make Yakety Yak Wireless your first stop. Our experienced sales staff will help you choose the phone that's best for you. We carry a vast array of basic and smartphones, and at Yakety Yak, you can try it before you buy it. Looking to save some money? We sell used and unlocked phones and provide the best in iPhone repair. Come into Yakety Yak Wireless for all your mobile phone needs. Welcome to the Yakety Yak Wireless uh, iPod Touch 4 repair video. Uh, today we're going to take a broken iPod Touch 4 and make it all better. We're going to be using several tools including a spudger, Phillips head screwdriver, a soft rounded spudger as opposed to the hard sharp ones. Uh, multiple spudgers will help. There's our broken iPod. We're also going to be using a uh, X-Acto knife and a pair of tweezers. They're not in the picture. This is our replacement screen. Make sure your screen and LCD are bonded together. If you have separate parts, throw them away and start over. We'll also use a variable temperature heat gun. That's pretty important to have. We're actually going to heat the iPod up to 150 degrees. We're not going to take it any hotter than that for fear of damaging any of the electrical components. Um, plenty of heat. Heat is your friend when you're doing this. So if it's a if you're using a, a heat gun, set it on low and keep it pretty far away because it's still too hot. Hair dryers, same thing. Um, but we've, like I said, set it 150. We're going to heat around the entire bezel very well. And then the first thing we're going to do is take an X-Acto knife and we're going to use this X-Acto knife to separate the plastic edge from the actual glass. You don't absolutely have to do this. I like to do it because it just makes it easier to take it apart afterwards. So we're going to go around the edge and you'll see me put the iPod down here so I don't cut my fingers off. There we go. Now, down by the home button, be a little bit careful. There's an area down by the home button that uh, you're not going to damage the components, but there's a uh, adhesive that holds the home button on that you're going to need to take off the broken screen and put on the new one. You don't want to tear that. The other areas to be aware of that are uh, dangerous are up near the top left hand corner is where the Wi-Fi is and on the left side the volume button flex cable which is tucked underneath the plate to begin with so you don't have to worry about it at the beginning. Now we're going to use our sharp edge spudger and we're going to get underneath so you can get all the way underneath the screen to the left and to the right of the home button you can only go in about an eighth of an inch down the sides because you'll hit the edge of the LCD so you can see here I'm just going in just slightly the upper left is the Wi-Fi antenna so be really careful in that area that's the one area where you can really damage your iPod right there we're going to tuck underneath here. Again, we're going to be really careful on the bottom of the home button, and then we're going to be able to punch it back in on the other side and go all the way up to the edge of the LCD. Again, heat is good. So if you're going slow, which you should, keep reheating it to help break the adhesive. The way you're going to do this is you're actually going to get underneath the LCD here and kind of pry up a little bit. You're going to lift from the bottom to the top. So I use multiple spudgers. So I'm going to come on in here and separate right there under to the left of the home button and then I'm going to go to the other side and separate to the right of the home button. You don't have to worry about the LCD because you're replacing it so it will get damaged in this process. Just be careful right around the home button itself. Um, not from lifting it, just from uh, prying anything underneath it because you could damage the home button itself, the plastic piece. So we're going to go ahead and lift this up. You can see some of the adhesive attached, so don't worry about that. Just yank it off and then lift up. Now in the upper left-hand corner is one thing you have to worry about. That is where your Wi-Fi antenna is adhered to the screen. So if it comes up in one piece, mine's broken up here in the top left, so I'm probably okay. But if it comes up in one piece, you want to use your spudger to get under there and pry it off between the glass and the Wi-Fi antenna. After you've done that, you can then lift the screen all the way up, take an X-Acto blade, cut the flex cable, because you don't need it anymore, and remove the screen. Hold on to it, because you still have to get the home button off of it. In my case here, I'm going to take the rest of the top piece off, and this is where you're going to see me get in here and separate that Wi-Fi antenna from the broken glass. You don't want to rip that, because if you do, the iPod will not connect to either Bluetooth or up to any Wi-Fi hotspots. 
Okay, now you can see here, this is the, uh, right there, that's the Wi-Fi antenna. It actually wraps all the way around the top side and connects over on the left side there with that screw. I'm just getting excess glass. A key thing to remember when you're repairing the iPod Touch 4 is get rid of every bit of old glass. If anything's in there, when you push the new screen down, it's going to crack it or break the LCD. Also, you need to remove all the old adhesive because we're going to be putting down new adhesive. Hopefully you got some when you got your iPod uh, replacement piece. Okay. So you can see me just cleaning up some remaining glass here. Okay, now, we've got the iPod fairly well clean. There's eight screws holding on this mid plate right here. And you got to take all eight of these screws out. And they are different sizes, so make sure and align them properly so you can remember which way to put them back in. I'm going to speed up the video here because everyone knows how to unscrew a screw, hopefully. After this is done, after all eight are out, this mid plate is adhered down and there's two very important areas. The first is the volume button flex cable right in that area. If you just lift this thing up, you're going to tear that and it's soldered. Second area is the lower left where the speaker assembly is just held in by two tiny little wires and if you lift that up, it's going to tear. So the first thing to do is get under the plate and this is there's a lot of adhesive here. Get underneath the plate but just between the plate and the black speaker box. So you should just go in at a completely flat angle. This is where multiple spudgers will help. Then the other area is when you get up to where the volume button flex cable is. and You'll see it. It's right, right here, right where I'm going in right now. And I, this is where I use my flat spudger that's softer and I angle it up towards the plate and just gently slide it in there. I use my fingernail to help pry up the board a little bit or the mid plate, but you just got to go really gentle here because if you tear that you better know somebody who knows how to solder or your volume buttons will never work again. So again you can see I'm just going very slow here. I haven't speeded up the video. I just kind of want everyone to get an idea of how gentle you got to kind of go underneath here. And once that adhesive is separated there you start to lift up. Be mindful of that speaker down in the lower left hand corner. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So there's that flex cable for the volume I was talking about and where it's soldered on the motherboard. And then down here, that's the speaker box. Lots of adhesive on it. And you can see the blue and the red wire. If you just lift that plate up and that speaker box lifts out with it, those two cables will tear. Okay, now we have to disconnect the motherboard. There's the Wi-Fi cable screw in the top left and in the top center is the screw that holds down the motherboard. You cannot take the motherboard completely out. All you can do is angle it up just a little bit and you have to be careful when you do it because there's several things you gotta watch out for. First thing you gotta watch out for is right at the top next to the camera is where the flux cable for the power button is. and You don't want the board to tear that cable. The other area, again, is this vo volume button cable. It only has a little bit of play. So I just use my fingernail and get under there and pull it up very gently. And I'm only pulling it up about a quarter of an inch, quarter to half an inch. Now we have to take off the flex uh, cable for the digitizer that we cut. It has some uh, copper foil wrapped around it. So you start from the um, right side of the top, pull it back, pull back on the left side, once it's unfolded, the flex cable pops off from the underside. This is the most frustrating part of the entire project is when you have to put that flex cable back on because you have to do it blind from the underside. So peel off the copper tape, put it on your new screen's base. Right here in new screen. We're going to go ahead and put that copper tape back on. And then you set the flex cable underneath the motherboard right there 
and now you use a spudger to help you align it and get it clicked on. You just need to get it just barely clicked on to where it's not where it doesn't slide around anymore. And when you do that, you can then fold the uh, copper back and then push it down and it will lock it into place. I speeded this up f by a factor of four, so you can see just how long it takes me to do this, and I've repaired quite a few of these. Um, when you first do this, it's going to take you 45 minutes, and you're going to get frustrated. Just go slow. Don't pull up on that board too much, or you're going to disconnect all the flux cables underneath and tear the volume. If you just go slow, eventually it'll set. And when it sets, you won't be able to pull on the flex cable. It'll get tight if you start to pull on it a little bit. I use the spudger from underneath and my finger from on top and just kind of angle it and push it down. Once it's down enough so it doesn't move, fold the copper um, foil back into place over the top of, the, of where it mounts. And then you're going to push the motherboard down. And when you push it down, it's actually going to lock that flex cable into place. You can see me pushing it down right here. Okay, that's now locked down. The next thing that you're going to want to do, once this thing is locked down, is you're going to want to test it. A lot of people go and uh, put it all back together now and find out they have a dead spot in their screen. So I actually plug the screen in here, and I'm going to boot it up, and I'm going to run my finger over all areas of that digitizer to make sure I don't have any dead spots, because it's no, nothing's more frustrating than putting the thing together only to find out that you've got to take it all the way back apart again. Let me go ahead and boot it up. Now, notice that I, I took it away for a second. Sometimes on the iPod Touches, they won't boot when you hit the power button after taking them apart, so all you have to do is plug them into a power source. Once you plug them into a power source, they'll be okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the old home button. Best way to do this is to get your sharp spudger and get underneath the sticker, uh, the adhesive that's holding it down by pushing with your finger from the back side. So you've been pushing with my finger and I'm kind of lifting up on that um, tape. Okay, the iPod just came up, so we're going to go ahead and test it. You can see I run my finger over all the areas of the screen. Make sure that everything works on it. Once everything works, I turn it back off. Make sure you remember to turn it back off. Okay, we're going to continue with this home button. So I'm pushing up with my finger from the underside, and I'm gently prying that adhesive up. There we go. Now it's off. If your iPod's broken down around the home button, you may have to peel off some extra pieces of glass. Make sure you get all of them so you don't break your new screen. And then you put it on in the reverse manner. You put it on from the underside. I fold back the protective tape so that way I can use my finger to help center it properly so it's not in there crooked. You can see it adheres back from the back side there. Now disconnect the LCD because we're going to reconnect that later since we've already tested it. Put in the two top screws, the center screw that holds down the motherboard and the Wi-Fi cable screw. Okay, now we're going to go and put the mid plate back in. It's got two tabs on the right side of it, so it kind of snicks in from the right side to the left. See the two tabs right there? get it aligned over the screw holes and then we're going to reinstall the eight screws and the proper positions. Okay. Okay, we got the eight screws installed. Now, adhesive. We have to lay down adhesive. You can buy an adhesive kit. Here's the problem. The adhesive kit only provides adhesive for the lower left, lower right, upper left, and the side rails. Um, side rails pieces are very skinny, so I don't tend to do those because um, they never stick right. I do the lower left, lower right, upper left, and then I actually use iPod or an iPhone 4 adhesive, and I get the upper right as well. Um, I just use the bottom part of an iPhone 4 adhesive to get the upper right. That helps the screen stay down better since um, you're using 
adhesive after the factory's done it, um, it's not going to want to stick as well as it did originally, and this will help keep the screen completely flush. So I actually put adhesive in all four corners. And you can use the iPod adhesive, or you can take the iPhone 4 bottom adhesive, get two sets of it, and just cut it to fit. They're both the exact same adhesive. The bottom pieces actually work uh, from the iPhone 4 without any modification. The ones for the top, I use the bottom half. I cut them down a little bit to fit. Okay, we go put the bottom adhesive on now. The other side here. Uh, make sure that um, you can see there's a white backing on the LCD screen there. Make sure and remove that. If you don't remove that protective white backing screen, it will not fit in there properly. There we go. Okay, next we have to connect the LCD cable. And the LCD, we had disconnected it after we tested it, now we just have to reconnect it. The other thing I want to talk about is that digitizer cable. It's very long, and you need to fold it in a Z pattern so it does not stick into the area where the LCD goes down. If you do that, the screen will not sit flush. So it should tuck completely back in under itself. So think of a Z pattern. It's very hard to show in a video, but if you do that, the screen should fit fine. So just fold it back on top of itself. And that's me doing it right there. It's really easy. You just tuck it under and it's ready to go. A couple of other things. Now you're going to seat the screen down on the adhesive. If the iPod was bent at all on the break, if the frame was bent, um, you've got the plastic bezel that the screen fits into, and you're going to see on mine it's bent a little bit in the lower right. So what I had to do is I actually have to use a sharp spudger to kind of tuck in there and try and pull that plastic bezel out a little bit so the screen gets back into place. Otherwise, the screen will stay lifted. Oh. And on every iPod, it could be different. You could have no damage. You could have a lot. You can see right here, I'm just kind of tucking that plastic bezel back into place. And after you get it all back together, test it. Test everything. And you might want to test it before you squeeze it down too hard in case you got to take it apart again. But what you're going to be testing here is you're going to be testing the home button, the power button, the volume button, uh, Wi-Fi, making sure everything works on it. So you'll see me just kind of go through these tests. So there's me checking the volume, checking the power button to make sure I didn't cut that. And you're going to go and look at Wi-Fi. got to find it on his. Just make sure you're getting a Wi-Fi signal is good. Check your home button action to make sure it's seated properly. And that's how you repair an iPod 4. If you have any questions, you can call Yakety Yak Wireless at 817-399-1000.